when it comes to flight simulation, let's be honest, nobody wants to pay another subscription just to get their flight plans to work. So if you're like me and you're tired of sim brief routes not matching your FMC and you've been looking for a free way to fix it, you've come to the right place. For the longest time I thought you had to deal with the errors or open your wallet for an updated error act cycle, but that's just simply not the case. Um, you know, you probably have issues like this, nav date out of date, and you make a flight plan in the sim brief and it just doesn't match up at all. And so today I'm gonna to be walking you through a step-by-step completely free method to sync your simulator's navigation data with what you generate in SimBrief. And by the end of the video, hopefully your flight planning frustration will be a thing of the past. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make a flight plan in SimBrief. And so I have that pulled up here, so I'll make one real quick. Okay, so now we got our flight plan in SimBrief. And if we were to take this route that we've generated and try plugging it into X-Plane or Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's not gonna work. There's going to be some discrepancies there. So what we're going to need is a program called uh, Little Nav Map. And I'll leave a link to it in the description. Little Nav Map is made by a guy named Alex. I've emailed him for help before and he's really awesome and it's a really wonderful uh, product. So you're going to come here and you want to download the most recent version. And in my case, I'm going to be downloading a Windows 64-bit installer and that's probably 99% of the case for other people. So once that finishes installing, you'll want to go to the download location. For me, I just downloaded it onto my desktop. So I'm going to open that. The, get the little ding sound. So you're going to come up to the installation window and you're just going to follow it. Next, you accept the agreement. Make sure to read all of that word for word. Hit next and continue and find a download space for it. And then here we are going to check this bottom one associate will now map with the X-Plane FMS file extension and then also this one as well if you have Microsoft Flight Simulator and honestly we're gonna, I'm gonna check them all okay so now that's done I'm gonna have it launch the little nav map and if you want to read through the manual start page you can select that to look at it in this case I won't Okay, so we're here in little nav map and it's gonna give us a little notification here that we need to download uh, some globe data and so I'll show you how to do that real quick. So we'll check out of that. It'll give us our first little welcome to little nav map and you can read that on your own time. It's gonna bring us to a helpful guide on how to get it set up, but I'll walk you through that instead. For this one, I'm just gonna select yes. So here it's going to load our scenery library, and so basically what this is going to do, it's going to find the ARAC cycle that your X-Plane or Microsoft Flight Sim may already have, and then it's going to load that into uh, this program. So you'll want to make sure it's to your flight program path. So we're going to hit load, and then I'll explain later if you want to, if you switch between X-Plane 12 and Microsoft Flight Simulator, I'll show you how to do that. that. So we're going to hit load, and it's going to load all that up for us. And so you can't see it right now, but that is indeed going. I can't click on it, but that's it, going through all the airports and all the different waypoints and files that we have. And so it's gonna come up with this little nav map connect. Um, basically, you can use a little nav map as well. It's kind of a little navigation display. And so by connecting this, you'll be able to uh, see your plane on the map and it'll just be a lot better for it to work with your, your simulator. So we're gonna connect. Then we're going to go to tools here as well and install a little XP Connect and Explain plugins. And we're going to hit yes for that. And we'll see how close this is to getting done. Looks like mine's going to want to freeze. It's going to freeze on me, but hopefully it'll work in a second. There it, go there it goes. So that's finished going. Looks like it found about 40,000 different airports, 234,000 different waypoints, and a lot of different things that our Eric cycle with the default X-Plane comes with. So I'm going to select to use this database. Okay, it's actually not gonna work for me yet. Oh, I gotta come here and select yes for that. And then we'll come back and select to use this database. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna okay that. So we're going to do what it recommended us to do in the beginning. We're going to go to Tools, Options, Cache and Files. And then we're going to click here to download the page for the globe data in our browser. And we're just going to download 
all tiles in one file and download that. So while that's downloading, you're going to want to go find your little nav map folder. And in here, we're going to make a file. And we're going to call it globe data. And this is just within that where you initially installed your little nav map. So we're going to put that right there and minus that. And so we're going to extract that file we just made. I'm not going to extract it to that folder we just made. Okay, perfect. Now we have that, except I actually don't want this folder here. So I'm going to grab all these and I'm going to move them back to this folder. Perfect. Okay, and we can delete that. And now that's where we want it to be. So we're going to get the link for this one. We'll bring that back here. And we'll click on use offline globe elevation data and put that in there and hit apply. Okay. I'm just going to okay that again. So now we have little nav map set up. And it's a lot of information. This can look a little daunting, but it's pretty easy what we need to do. Right? So we are now going to go up to file and make sure you still have SimBrief open. We're going to come down to open flight plan from SimBrief. Uh, and actually what you need to do is connect your SimBrief to little nav map. So type in whatever your username may be. In my case it was this. And then I'm going to hit download flight plan. All right, so I found my flight plan, the one I made from Denver to John and F. Kennedy International. And so you're just going to want to hit download flight plan. Are you serious right now, bro? I'm sorry, you're going to want to hit create flight plan. Perfect. So now it's loaded our flight plan. And if we pull up um, SimBrief, you can see that it's pretty much a match. It looks practically identical to the sim brief one and the only difference that's been made is it's changed from this air act cycle that it used in sim brief that you have to pay for and has converted it into the one that we have within x plane and if we go up to the scenery library you can see that it's using the air act cycle 23303 that's the one that i have uh, in x plane instead of this 2403 so sometimes the procedures and things like that can get messed up, specifically approach and departure. And so I'm gonna, I usually go through and fix those myself. So you're gonna want to find uh, over here. Here it's gonna have all your waypoints, uh, all your flight plan information. So you're just gonna go to the airport you're taking off from and right-click on it and press Show Departure Procedures for uh, whatever airport it is. And then you're gonna go and select the runway you're using. In this case, it's 34 left and then you're going to select departure. So you can cycle through them, you see a little blue line that comes up with what your departure options look like for that runway. And this one matches up with what we have, so I'm going to add that one. Make sure it's 34 left. Now that's in there. And again, it could potentially be in there already, but I do that just in case because sometimes it may, may not be. Then we're going to click on our arrival. We're going to add an ILS approach just in case that didn't get in there very well. So right click, click show arrival approach procedures for John F. Kennedy. And so I'm going to select our runway, which is 22 left. And then I'm going to make sure it's an ILS approach. Looks like there's only one. And so as you can see, when I insert that, it'll come up like that and add in our approach for us. And now that's pretty much it. Um, now, to get the information you need to put this into X-Plane or Microsoft Flight Simulator, all you'll need to do is come up to Flight Plan, and then Flight Plan Route Description, click that, and then Load from Flight Plan. And then this gives you what you need to enter into your FMC, and we can compare that to SimBrief. As you can see, some things remain the same, like Eons 8 is still there, and then DCT is gone, but HCT is there, or, or they're in weird different orders. but. All it's done is it's made it work for X-Plane and work exactly as it would in SimBrief.
So you can also upload these straight into your flight simulator rather than typing them out onto a leg page, a route page, if you desire that. I'll make a separate tutorial down below on how to import these files into X-Plane or Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you'd rather do that, then type these out in the route page yourself. So check that out if you find that interesting. Bitch, start tripping now I'm blue. Mega man, I can't wait for losing because I got too many haters, man. Used to be the paper boy. Grew up now I'm Mega Man. Player one, player two, show you.